Hi there, welcome to Annex D, calculation of voltage drop. Let's get right into it. Again, same information. For single phase we use 230 volts and in three phase we use 400 volts. Now, once again, 5% uh, of maximum allowable voltage drop of 230 volts is 11.5 and it would be 20 volts for 400 volts. For 380 it would be 19 volts and 220 volts it would be 11 volts. We have here question 10 and it says here an existing factory needs to expand its operations. It currently has a three phase 30 kilowatt power source and only uses 95% of its source. The new expansion will be a three phase 35 kilowatt load. The municipal supply is a three phase 100 kVA 400 volt AC transformer with a power factor of 0 0.9. Technically that should be 0 0.9. Okay, so even in the question paper it is 0 0.9, but you do not get a power factor of 9. That can only be 0 0.9. Nine, and is 20 meters away from the factory's main DB. The supply cable is armored copper cables buried directly in trenches underground. Method 3. A new cable will be added to the ex uh, existing one in parallel. Table 64A and table 64B is attached uh, in the question paper so I can only imagine that this would be used. For our calculations 10.1 would be calculate the minimum size of the existing cable and give a reason for your answer also 10.2 would be calculate the size of the new cable to be added and give a reason for your answer for five marks and then 10.3 would be calculate the total expected voltage drop for the installation of the new load is added and give a reason for your answer for two marks Right, number one goes like this, 10.1. It says calculate the minimum size of the existing cable and give a reason for your answer for three marks. Firstly, calculate the current, but which info do we use? So we have three phase 30 kilowatt power source and it only uses 95% of its source. So this is a problem. How do we interpret this? So. The information in the first sentence or the first and uh, second sentence is applicable to this calculation. Note, minimum size of the existing cable. Okay. Question 1 says calculate the minimum size of the existing cable. That should be a key because for me that stood out. I recommend that we use 95% of 30 kilowatt. Why? Um, my reasoning is that with all other calculations, only the actual output P, you know, power in kilowatt is used and never the available power source. Again, for this whole supply, I'm using 35 kilowatt load. They are referring to the percentage of the full load. If I work out, if I work out the, uh, how can I say, the amps or the power for the full load, then I would find that it is not 35 kilowatt. But 35 kilowatt is what is drawn from the new supply or what is expected to be drawn from the new supply. And that again also brings me to believe that it is not the power source. Okay, let's have a closer look at what I'm talking about. I make an example here and say, for example, one 60 watt lamp in a room, right, on a 15 amp breaker with a 230 volt supply. The voltage drop will be calculated for the 60 watt lamp and not for the power source, which interpret in this case to be P equals 230 times that 15 amp supply that is available. Again, the 15 amp supply in this example that's available equals the 30 kilowatt there but all our calculations that we've used so far is only for the actual you know kilowatt like for instance let's say 
in all in the calculations we've done so far we've got a four kilowatt geezer but the geezer is on a formal cable which is protected by a 30 amp circuit breaker now if we take the 30 amp circuit breaker and times it by 230 we're not going to get four kilowatt but we are using the kilowatt or the output of the geezer that means and interprets to me that 95 percent of 30 kilowatt is the actual load drawn so therefore i would lean towards using 95 percent of that 95 percent of that you know the answer is something else so let's see where my reasoning takes us therefore we we assume the minimum size of the existing cable is the cable to be used for 95 percent the minimum size of the existing cable is to be used let's go on which leads to us to believe that the maximum size of the existing cable is calculated for 30 kilowatt which is equal to 100 100 percent of the power source but they're not asking us for the maximum the maximum would be 30 kilowatt that we're going to use the minimum is 95 percent of 30 kilowatt all right let's see let's move forward so i calculate my current um i i got this 28.5 kilowatt i got this by deducting five percent from uh 30 000 watts okay so this is 95 percent of 30,000 watts or 30 kilowatt and then i say uh, p equals um that's i equals p divided by v square root 3 so i need to times 400 by square root 3 and divide that into my 28.5 uh, kilowatt i get 41.14 amps um, the calculation can also look like this where i don't manipulate the formula but i rather inject the values and then times it out and then find the scenario where i equals 28500 divided by 692,82 and i get that same answer there I said use table 6.4a to find the cable size by using the calculated amps. I've got this amps here. Go to column 3 over here for 3 phase. I then line up where my amps is. So see where 41.14 amps fit in. I say 42 amps is just more than 41.14 amps, which will give you 6 millimeter squared cable size. And this cable conductor size will be the bare minimum that we can use therefore we choose 42 amps according to the table and we line up the uh, cable size according to that amps and we say the cable size would be six millimeters squared cable we now need a reason for our answer so a reason for using 10 millimeter squared cable or at least six millimeter squared cable would be to then use the 6.4 we found here and then injecting it into the cable using our amps that we've calculated 41.14 and we then get a voltage drop of 5.266 volts which uh, adds up to you know if we say um, put one a digit after the decimal 5.3 volts a reason the voltage drop is within or less than the maximum allowable voltage drop i am happy with this answer question 10.2 then says calculate the voltage sorry calculates the size of the new cable to be added and give a reason for your answer the new cable is the extension and if we look here we see they do say that it's installed parallel and we would assume that parallel is the same distance uh, from the transformer to where the actual other db is the old db 
I calculate my m's and I use a formula of p equals v i square root 3. So in three phase, it is it looks like the same formula except for we uh, we times square root 3 because of the three phase. I manipulate that formula and I get i equals 35,000 divided by 400 times square root 3, I get 50,52 amps. And I use also another format um, of calculating, uh, except for in this case, in this formula, I don't uh, multiply out or make the subject of the formula. And uh, I then inject the values and I times it out and I get this at the end of the day, I equals 35,000. Uh, divide by 692,82 and I get 50,52 amps. Then I say use the table 64A to find the cable size by using the calculated amps. I use that calculated amps and I then line that up. I say go to column 3 on the table and see where the 52,52 fit in. It is definitely more than 42 amps for a three phase cable. I cannot use that value. The next value is 50. 58 it it falls within that range i then line that up with my cable size and i come to a cable size of 10 millimeter squared cable and this is a reason why i can use 10 millimeter squared cable for my second uh, supply cable so um is there another reason why i can use this cable i say maybe let's see I, I calculate the actual voltage drop using that cable size. So I go to the, the, the table that gives us the, the millivolt per ampere meter uh, uh, value, which is 3,8. I use 10 mil, I use 3,8 for three phase. I inject in that into that formula and I get a voltage drop of 3,84, which is a great answer. The voltage drop, according to another reason, well, this cable is within or less than the maximum allowable voltage drop. So for five marks, I can possibly do this if I wanted to, just to substantiate my answer. Alternatively, um, if we wanted to use the information of nine, uh, 0 0.9, the power factor, this is what we would have come up with, is that the, the formula would look almost the same, which would be, P equals V times I times the power factor times uh, square root 3. Now, just in short, power factor is also the cos theta. So if I had an angle, then I would say it is cos the angle and it would be the 0.9. All right. So um, I manipulate this formula and say I equals P divided by V times power factor times square root 3. I inject my values and I get 58,13 amps. Guess what? If I use that and I use the same table, I go there uh, in that column and I find and I align my amps with the closest amps. 42 amps is too high. It falls within the 58. I line it up with my cable size and I still get the same cable size, amazingly. I then take that cable size and go and inject it into another uh, table or use another table for my millivolt per ampere meter. I then get a 3.8 value and I put that into a formula and I get to a voltage drop of 4.26 volts. Both these answers is not bad. I say the reason for the alternative is uh, the voltage drop is within or less than the maximum allowable voltage drop. So at the end of the day, I got to the same size cable and I got to the same answer, all right, for the alternative formula. Then according to question three, calculate the total expected voltage drop for the installation after the new load is added and give a reason for your answer. I say VD total with both loads, all right? I then take say, say VD total equals VD existing plus VD new. So I take the two voltage drops added. Alternatively, it can also look like this because we use two formulas 
and um, VD existing, then plus VD 4,26, and it still it comes to 7,39. Both these answers, uh, the reason for both answers, the voltage drop is within or less than the maximum allowable voltage drop. And if you look at the question, calculate the total expected voltage drop for the installation after the new load is added. That is one answer, that one or that one, and then another answer or another point, uh, point number two that you would score is give a reason for your answer. So do you score one mark or two marks, depending on which of these is expected from you. All right, but this answer will be the same for both. So that is um, good news, um, depending on how you take it and who is calculating.